Okay, guys, welcome back to the channel. It's been a while as we sit here eagerly awaiting full self-driving to go public and get out of that beta. Uh, we've got the latest update 2020.44, which is bringing a couple of key features from that beta in anticipation of a public launch, as well as some new media features. Let's jump right into it. All right, 2020.44, a whole host of features. The key thing here, one of the big features that's coming out as a result of or coming from that early access beta is the autopilot set speed. Now, this is a new feature that is going to be a little bit redundant depending on uh, what hardware you have in your car, but it basically allows you to set an autopilot based offset. And this is again, lay laying the foundation for eventual full self-driving release and what some of the, the early access testers are testing right now. Okay, so what it says is that you can now change the autopilot set speed offset by adjusting controls autopilot speed offset. This is gonna give you two options, one for a fixed speed offset uh, and then the other for a percentage based offset. All right. And then it says when activated, autopilot will set the cruise speed to the speed limit of the road and will adjust either to the set speed offset that is specified or the current driving speed, whichever is greater. OK. And it makes a note to say that your previously set off speed will not carry over to the new set speed feature. So what does that all mean? So first, let's take a look at the menu autopilot menu here. Uh, we see that we have the option for speed offset. And that means that as autopilot is now maturing and getting into the full self-driving stage of things, it's going to be able to read and adapt its speed according to where it's driving, be it on city streets or be it on a highway. And so what this is doing is allowing you to set a speed offset for those who wish to travel a little bit faster or move a little bit more in accordance to the speed of traffic as opposed to going the uh, set speed limit or the uh, posted speed limit exactly. OK, so if you have a, a fixed speed limit, you can say I want to go five miles an hour over or I want to go 10 miles an hour over when you engage autopilot, which will eventually become full self driving autopilot. Uh, it'll basically adjust to that no matter where it drives. If it's driving in a 25 mile an hour zone, it'll go to 30 miles an hour. Uh, if you're driving in a 35 mile an hour zone, it'll be set to 40 miles an hour as the maximum speed and the speed that it will drive through. OK, same thing for highway. When you go to highway 65, 55, et cetera, it's going to have that five mile an hour offset buffer. Again, assuming that's going to be going from city streets to highway and back to city streets again, making sure that you understand what that is. OK, that differs from this speed limit, which is the relative speed limit from the previous uh, iteration of autopilot and a sort of adaptive cruise where you're able to set a relative and absolute offset that will go 10 miles an hour over or you know whatever the case may be, depending on where you're driving and depending on where you have adaptive cruise control and where you have autopilot enabled. So what I see happening here is that right now, this is overridden. This sort of becomes obsolete if you have full self-driving or if you have any form of, of autopilot. If you don't have autopilot, then this whole menu goes away and all you get is just this sort of old school relative speed limit. So for cars that are older, that don't have the hardware, you're just gonna have this. For cars that are newer and have the full self-driving hardware or autopilot hardware in terms of autopilot 2.0, Tesla vision system, et cetera, you're going to have this menu up here where this is going to be the focal point of your driving speed offset. OK, right now in its current form, before full self-driving has rolled out, this does not work if you make it anything above five miles an hour over, because right now autopilot on city streets is limited to five miles an hour over, regardless of what the speed is, right? So if it's 25, it's gonna be limited to a maximum of five miles an hour over. If it's 35, 40, et cetera, on local roads or roads that Tesla has mapped as local. Highways, interchanges, interstates, things of that nature, um, you can still use this to be greater than five miles an hour over, the same as you would on Navigate and Autopilot right now, all right? But right now, again, you can change it to percentage, and you can choose a percentage, which may which may be a more acceptable overage or offset from the original speed limit, different than the mile an hour offset. So instead of going five miles an hour over, you can say, I want to go, you know, five percent over or 
3% over the speed limit. It gives you a little bit of a rough calculation as to what that looks like here. 35 miles an hour as a speed limit, you'll be going 36 miles an hour if you go 3% over, right? If, it's, if you're in a 65 mile an hour speed limit zone, you'll be going 67. So it gives you more precision and control uh, in terms of the degree in which your offset is based on going again from city to highway. Again, five miles an hour over on the highway may not be that big of a deal, but on city streets, five miles an hour over is a big deal. So percentages allows you to get more fine tuned controls to be able to make this work in a more agreeable way for wherever you're driving. Okay. So that's the new feature. That's what's been carried over from the beta in terms of this particular update. Very cool feature. I wish they would just get rid of this completely if you have hardware three or hardware uh, 2.0 with any form of autopilot active, just so, I, so as to not confuse you because this absolutely gets overwritten by this one. The next thing they have is they revamped the media player again uh, with Spotify improvements. I'm gonna group these all together just so we can talk about them all at once. Spotify improvements, which, which improves the visual layout, making it easier to find content, as well as creating what they call gapless playback, meaning it will go from song to song without stopping in between or switching. It'll just play right through, which is awesome. Uh, and then they also have media search improvements. So that's part of this new UI that they're rolling out. I think they're all seeds for version 11 software, uh, but this is the beginnings of that in terms of the visualization of the media player and what it looks like. So search improvements are now rearranged to be more organized based on the media source. And they're gonna have a more vigilant eye on the actual real estate of the media player to give you uh, the ability to customize, which is great. Uh, it was always good to have an option to customize where you're going, what you see in terms of your UI. You couldn't really do that as much, uh, definitely not on the Model uh, 3 and Model Y, but a little bit so on the Model S and X until they unified everything in version 10. Uh, but this is giving you the ability to change media sources and show what you want to display here. So let's take a look at that really quickly. So here we have Spotify up. Here's the new UI. I've, I've also noticed a little USB type of icon right here. I guess this tells you that you have a USB audio source plugged in, which is kind of cool. And maybe there's two of them if you have two of them plugged in. I just have one. Uh, so it just shows one here. So that's the first thing you want to notice here. Uh, beyond that, you have, again, these nice little clean tiles, colorful tiles. Uh, you can choose genre and moods, things of that nature. You can go to home to see what you've recently played, et cetera, where it's going to show you exactly what that is and, and, go, and group the content according. OK, so that's pretty much it in terms of uh, Spotify and the new UI. Uh, everything else that's going to flow from this update specifically is going to be in regards to searching, being able to search. I'm going to type in my guy, Tom Mish here. I'm not going to play anything because I don't want to get tagged, but I'll type in his name. I'll search. And when this searches, it's now going to show me uh, the details of this search grouped in a little bit more organization, right? So now I can see things more clearly. I can see exactly where everything is. Top songs, songs from Spotify, again, showing you the icon of where the sources of the search are between Spotify and TuneIn uh, and any other sources that may contain this particular artist. All right, so that's pretty cool. Makes it a lot easier, makes it a lot more modern in terms of the UI, the look and feel, and being able to search for things intuitively and understand where they're coming from. Again, tune in up top as the top result with the songs, and then also, again, Spotify results as well, if you have Spotify or Sirius XM or whatever else, whatever the case may be, or even your USB uh, stick as well, okay? Beyond that, you have uh, the settings, which gives you the ability to hide certain things that are not relevant to you. If you wanna say, hey, I don't listen to the radio, you want to say, hey, I don't listen to, you know, karaoke. I'm going to remove that Sirius XM. And now you see the UI becoming a lot cleaner now. Doesn't include those. Uh, again, you can tailor this to whatever makes sense to you. You can always bring them back. Uh, but if it's not something that makes sense, they will be excluded here in the menu, but they won't be excluded in the search results. So if you have search results and it's something that's found in karaoke or on the radio or a source that you have uh, deemed as not visible on the media player, it'll still show up in the results here. So that gives you sort of the best of both worlds, not having the clutter in the media player itself, um, but still having the flexibility to, um, you know, have the results of that content come up in a search. Okay. The last thing we want to talk about here is voice command language. Uh, they've added support for additional languages. So if you have, if you speak a different language and it's easier for you to give voice commands that way, it's going to be able to, to support that as well. Uh, so we go to controls, you go to display, 
Uh, and then you have the option to do voice recognition and choose from a variety of different languages. I'm gonna do a separate video on Tesla's voice command. It's our, it's AI for voice commands and how that works. But just in general for this particular update, if you speak another language, a long list here, Spanish, French, Canadian, French, Italian, Netherlands, uh, Norwegian, uh, Polish, Portuguese, and Swedish, uh, you can speak that and the Tesla voice commands will now pick that up. So in addition to having the UI, change the language. You're also going to be able to support uh, the voice commands in those different languages as well. So that's pretty cool on Tesla's end. All right. So one of the other things that we did not get in this update uh, that the new performance model S and X did get is improvements to speed and power uh, via the launch control. Right. So giving it more power, more speed through its launch control and some algorithms and some updates to the software that they've done to uh, adjust the motors, that permanent magnet motor in the front, as well as the uh, so sort of the Ravens, what they call the Raven setup with the new motor in the front and the suspension. Uh, they made some adjustments there. So if you have a performance model S or X uh, deemed as performance, not P100D, uh, you likely have the Raven setup and therefore you have uh, an improvement and it'll say so as much in the release notes as well. OK, so that's pretty much it from this update. Everyone's going to be on pins and needles uh, looking for the full self driving to go out of beta and be publicly available. So we'll keep an eye on that. Uh, and as soon as it comes in, we'll get those videos up to you. In the meantime, if anyone has any questions, drop them down in the comments below. Until the next video, enjoy your day. Enjoy your Tesla.